I'm going to glue some front edge banding to the uh, front edge of the dust dividers that are between the drawers, both top and bottom. Uh, that way you don't have to be looking at the end of plywood when the drawers are open. I've cut some a little over quarter inch thick strips from the maple that's being used in this piece. I'm just going to glue it on with some uh, Type Bond Original. I've got uh, five clamps here just to distribute the pressure evenly. Uh, you figure with a uh, with a clamping call block, the pressure is going to get distributed at about a 45 degree angle, so you need to have enough clamps to give you an even pressure across the entire uh, length of the, of the strip. So we'll just go ahead and put a little glue on here. And I cut those strips a little bit wide so that when they're glued in place, I can uh, just touch them up with a planer top and bottom and get them nice and flush with the, uh, with the plywood here. And I'm using maple plywood uh, to match the rest of the piece. You notice I've got a couple of uh, stretcher sticks here so that I can raise the plywood off the clamps a little bit. And that will help me. Anyway, that will help me uh, position this band exactly where I want it. I try to get the glue nice and even and not too thick. Don't want a lot of squeeze out. Squeeze out doesn't do you any good in the bond, but a slight bit of squeeze out shows you that you put enough glue on and you won't have a glue starved joint. Okay. Okay, clamping calls in place. Let's just bring up the center clamp just a little bit. Get that one positioned where I want it, and then I can adjust the vertical. Reach underneath, I can adjust the vertical on the ends. Got to make sure you got a little bit of a lip to plane off. You definitely don't want the banding to be below the surface of the plywood because that last ply of the plywood is very thin and you can plane right through that. And there we are. Let that set for half hour, 45 minutes or so and we should be okay to move on to the next panel. The front maple edge banding is now connected to the, uh, the dust dividers that go between the drawers. And as I said, I cut them a little bit proud, so now I have to take off just a little bit to make the surface nice and flush. First thing I'll do is use my carbide scraper to get rid of any glue bumps. You gotta be very careful that you, you're not cutting into the plywood because the veneer on this maple veneer plywood is very Just trying to get the big glue bumps off so that I'm not planing them off with the planer blade. Okay, I've taken a block plane uh, with a 35 degree bevel uh, iron, sharpened it up nice and sharp, got it nice and even, and I'm taking off just uh, tiny thin slivers. First cut will be a little rough as we still have some glue we're dealing with. Now 
I'm bedding the plane onto the uh, plywood so that as I bring the surface of this banding down, it'll become more and more parallel to the face of the plywood. Also, it minimizes the risk of me tilting the plane, if I was like this, tilting it into the plywood and taking a little gouge with the corner. As I said, this veneer face plywood uses the very thin veneers to give it its surface. Okay, and there we go. Nice and smooth, no damage to the plywood. It looks very good. Now I have to cut the little ears off of the banding. I could do it with a handsaw, but with a whole less time and a whole lot more accuracy, I simply install the stop block, clamp it to my radial saw table at the right uh, distance, and then I'll just whack these off with the radial saw. I have the dust dividers and they're going to be sandwiched between the sides and the way they're going to connect to the sides are through these drawer slides. These are actually drawer slides I'm going to mount top and bottom and they not only will guide the drawers but they'll also have holes drilled in them so I can then attach these to the vertical plywood sides and I'll glue that surface. I'll also drill up through the bottom, four or five screws to clamp this together onto the dust divider with glue. So I need to mark where I don't want any finish because I finish my work as much as I can before assembly. So I've got the marking gauge set to seven eighths of an inch. These are one inch thick drawer slides. If I make a mark at seven eighths and just make sure I don't put any finish outside of that mark, I'll be okay for gluing later on. Sanding down these panels is a multi-step process. First I'm going to look at the edge banding that I glued on here. If there's any burn marks from the, uh, from the saw, I want to get those out of there and I'll use a scraper for that. This one looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit of burn mark right here. Do a little light scraping to remove that. And then I'll start with a little 320 grit sandpaper. Go ahead and sand. I'll work up to 400 grit. Getting the face and softening the corners. Softening this edge. Don't want anybody hurting their fingers or anything on that. Now I'm going to sand down the face so that I don't scratch the plywood veneer in case there happens to be a little bump on my table or something. I laid down a sheet of this uh, little foam rubber stuff that they use for uh, lining cabinet and drawers and kitchen. Stuff works good as a non-skid pad too when you're sanding. Anyway, set that on there. Put my vibration gloves on. Get out my Rotex sander with uh, 320 grit sandpaper using random orbit mode and uh, Panels are the dust dividers, and they're internal to the to the uh, desk. I get. I still want to uh, put some finish on them because the drawers are going to slide on here, and the drawers will slide better on a finished surface. 
Plus, I always like to finish the inside of my furniture as much as I can, as much as practical. So, I've got some half pound cut shellac, which is a ratio of a half pound of shellac flakes to a gallon of denatured alcohol. And I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, wash coat on here. And then I'll later on be staining the front uh, edge banding that I attached uh, to match the rest of the piece because this edge banding will be visible from the front. And I'll be careful not to get outside of the little marks that I made with my depth gauge. Now the, the shellac on the uh, maple that's going to be stained will help the stain penetrate more evenly. And I'll do several coats out here in the field until I get some build up. I might even move up to a one pound cut shellac to give me a little quicker build up. But I'm only going to put the one coat on the front here until I've stained it. And then I will uh, <coughs> excuse me, put more finish on after that. I've got a one wash coat of the half pound shellac everywhere on this dust divider. Now I want to stain the bull nose. It's edge banding I put on here. Uh, this part in the front will be slightly visible between the drawer drawers. Um, the part in here won't be visible at all. And uh, so I'm just going to stain just this part uh, and not uh, expend a whole lot of effort trying to color match the inside that no one will see. I just take one of my little brushes. I'm just using a uh, what they call an acid brush you get at the hardware store for, for a dime or so and use my fingers as a guide and just go ahead and put a layer on right on down the strip. And I'll just go ahead and wipe off the excess, and that's it. Flip it over to the other side, then do the front, and let that dry. Now I'm going to show you how I drill the pilot holes for the screws that go through the two uh, drawer slides, which uh, are sandwiching the dust divider. Of course, the dust divider is not in here right now because I'm just trying to drill the pilot holes through these slides. What I've done is I've matched up pairs of slides with marks and numbered so that I don't confuse them and taped them together so that the ends are nice and flush. And I've marked where the holes have to be to put 3 inch number 10 screws up through the bottom. Okay, Let's see if I can do this right up through the bottom and into the top piece and then with some glue and screwing them down they'll attach to the dust dividers and act as, as, a, as a drawer slides and also as flanges to attach the dust dividers to the sides of the box. So I want to make sure that these screw holes line up when I'm all done and that's why I've made the uh, tape and the marks. I've got my drill set so that it'll just go through the first um, slide and just touch into the, to the bottom one and that then I will use a 1 8 inch bit to drill out where the threaded area is going to grip. Uh, this is a 3 16 inch bit for the shank of the screw, 1 8 inch bit for the threaded area. Okay, so the holes are drilled and you can see I've just kissed into this other part just enough to tip so I know where to drill the eighth inch holes. Once I drill them together, then I'll mark the holes on the dust dividers, drill those clearance holes, and then I'll be ready to glue up. Now the type of screw that I'm using to uh, attach the, uh, the slides are 
stainless steel machine screws. I like machine screws just to be my standard screw because you've got the same diameter shank the whole the whole way. It's just a simple matter of drilling a hole the size of the shank for your pilot. And uh, also I like stainless steel because uh, no matter what kind of wood I use, I don't have to worry about the uh, the tannins in the wood uh, forming tannic acid and causing the screws to corrode. So I've got a uh, countersink here. It's just a, uh, a V-shaped uh, bit with a 3 16th inch pilot driver. Fence is adjusted correctly. And I've just adjusted my depth correctly. To make a little countersink there for the screw head to fit into. This is how I'm attaching the drawer guides to the dust dividers. First I'm going to go ahead and use the bottom uh, glide as a, uh, as a template for drilling the holes through the plywood. Put on a little bit of uh, glue. Just using Franklin's original for this. And in place, I'm going to lubricate the glues with a little bit, uh, the screws, a little bit of this uh, Lloyd's Acum Pucky. Kind of a waxy stuff I got from Jamestown Distributors. Trying it out for the first time. See if it's better than soap. I know it's more expensive. Clean off any squeeze out. And finally put on a few clamps between the screws. Help give me a little better glue contact. And there we are. One side's glued up. Let that set and I'll get the other side.